Hello everyone, Dolphin Oracle here again tonight, today actually, day before Christmas, Christmas Eve, Merry Christmas to all of you, or whatever holiday you choose to celebrate, I hope you enjoy it. Here I am on the new MX-18, this is brand new this week, uh, just finally getting around to making a video, but uh, let's just do a little quick little what's new about what's in here. Now, number one, before we get too started, I just want to say that 99% of what's in MX-18 is going to automatically come down to UMX-17 users. So, you know, you don't really have to do that much to, to, to do the update. And there is a migration page on our MX Linux website that will show you the bits and pieces that aren't automatic. But I'll walk you through a couple. So, at any rate, so this is the default desktop. Now, actually, this is not the default desktop. I've already changed my icons. I changed my icons to uh, a set that's available to download in the MX package installer. Uh, that's the, these are the, I want to say they're the Obsidian icons, but the default icon set's not changed from from the original MX17 release. It's the same same icon set. I just keep a custom theme for myself. And I believe I showed you guys how to make a custom theme in an earlier video, so it's kind of fun to do a custom theme set, rather. So I keep one handy so that I can make all those changes quick and dirty. On the panel, the only new thing on the panel right now is the logout button. The logout button brings up the classic uh, logout menu. No, no big major changes there. Now, it's going to put a, some of you off a little bit because the logout button, I've already heard from one user, um, he will go, remain nameless, however, it may be a longtime Ubuntu user and or slash developer who feels that the logout button is in the wrong place, that the menu should be up there and the logout button should be somewhere else. You know, whatever. You want to know how easy this thing is to move? You right click on the thing, you click move, or if you don't want it, you click remove and it's gone. So there you go. Easy to fix. Easy peasy, twice cheesy. Okay, so I think I just switched my desktop there. So here we are, default desktop. What's new in here? There is a few new things. And I'm going to pop open the MX tools because that's the easiest way to show you what's new. Uh, first off, the boot options uh, tool has been expanded. Let me uh, type in a password here. The boot options tool has been expanded to include uh, a kernel parameters line. So if you have some special boot code that you need to put in there for your hardware, I know there's some guys with S-Video ports that are behaving a little wonky with the 4.19 kernel, you can put in your, your cheat code here, your boot code, to do that. And also we have uh, the, the, the usual background image uh, that you can change in the Grub menu, but we also have themes. Now, we were going to do the Grub themes as a, as a default option, uh, as a default, but they're not quite ready because uh, the Grub menus tend to default to different resolutions um, at, on different monitors. And so the themes didn't look all that good if a, if a resolution was set too low. So we, we just skipped that for this go around. But you can set these things manually if you want. If you click the Enable Theme button, there are themes in here that you can select. And just click the theme text file, and you can get whatever theme you want. I'm, I'm not going to enable the theme right now while I'm recording a video because it does a bunch of updating things. All the old message uh, options from our previous video on this tool are here. Everything's there for you you see and you can adjust the timeouts and all that other fun stuff your default boot entries and that kind of thing okay so one thing about default boot entries that I found is they don't necessarily uh, unless your menu is flat then it's a little it, um, it won't select it on the next if, if, the, if the default entry you want is in a sub menu it doesn't select the sub menu but if you let the thing time out it does boot through that's true on my machine Whatever. If, you, if you're going to use a default other than uh, than something on the top level, use the flat menus. It's easier. All right. So closing out of this, what else is new in here? We've got a couple of uh, extra tools here. Uh, the Codex installer will install some S3 texture packs. Um, this is going to be handy for some of you guys that do Steam type games. Uh, there is the open source version of the S3 texture packs included on the 18 ISO. They're not included by default on the 17 MX17 series ISOs. The 18 ISO does have the open source version of those texture packs included, but we found that uh, the uh, the proprietary versions, which are now not patent encumbered anymore, apparently. Uh, anyway, you can pull those in with the with the Codex installer. The performance is a little bit better with those we found. 
Uh, what else do we've got here? We've got the, uh, there's really nothing new in Tweak. System keyboard and system locales. Now these are quick and handy links to the built-in Debian um, package uh, reconfiguration routines for selecting your system default keyboard and locales respectively. Uh, that's really going to be really nice if you uh, installed the system and need to change your default keyboard after the fact. After you've done the install, you can do that there. Of course, remember from the live system, you can also set your default keyboards there. But if you need something special or something that's not particularly um, not available, maybe in the installer or in the F2 menus from the from the live system, then that system that, that system keyboard tool here is a nice, quick, easy way to get that keyboard adjusted. Same thing with locales. You can adjust your locales. One one nice trick here is that if you don't need locales this first screen is locales to be generated let's say you're only a one language kind of guy maybe you're only English maybe you're only Spanish you can uncheck all the ones that are in here that are checked by default and only generate the locale for the one you for the language you need this can be handy on certain tools especially certain applications that update the locales when they uh, when they update it'll only generate that stuff for, for the one locale you have configured instead of the I don't know 12 or 15 default ones that are that are configured. And then of course it's also handy for setting your default language if you didn't do that in the installer or in the uh, boot menus from F2 from the from the live system. <sighs> the system keyboard, we say why don't I just use the XFCE system keyboard? Because the XFCE keyboard app uh, application only works inside the XFCE environment. So if you log into a different environment that keyboard is those changes you make in the XFCE keyboard app don't carry over. It's a little it's a little strange, and it took me a little while to wrap my head around it. Uh, it def but the XFCE keyboard app defaults to using the system default keyboard, so that should work at any given time. Other than that, some things you might not have seen since my last video is the package installer has uh, a few more odds and ends in it for you guys who are looking for Grub Customizer. Uh, it's in here under utilities. You can you can check a box if you really want it. You can have it. Clonezilla is in here for because by popular demand. Uh, there's something else that off the top of my head I don't remember. Oh, in the themes category. So these are some of the items that you guys who are updating from 17 might want to be interested in. Whoops, I clicked the wrong button. Uh, themes, 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 themes. Here we go. So to the, this item here, Grub Themes MX. That's the theme pack that MX Boot Options looks to to set the Grub themes. Uh, that is, if you want it, it's available here. You can get it. Uh, also, if we look at the artwork, let me use the search window for this. Artwork. It helps if I can spell art right, art correctly. Uh, I did that wrong. Next. Oh, it's because it's wallpapers, not artwork. So. The wallpapers in MX18 will not download automatically to MX17 users. If you want the new wallpaper pack that's included on the 18 ISO, we've got it right here in our wallpapers category. And for that matter, while I've got this open, the new kernel is available in the kernels area as well. So um, the kernel will not update automatically from the U17 users. Update it if you want. Uh, everything should work just fine with the older kernel. If you want to keep it, if nothing's broke, you don't want to, and you don't care about the the specter and meltdown mitigations, you know, stick with it. I don't care. Uh, but it's your it's your computer. But if you want the new kernel, if you want the latest that everybody's using, 4.19 is here. And of course, the Debian 4.9 kernel is also up to date. So if you need to use an older kernel, you can still do that, and that's okay. Okay, the other thing in, in MX Package Installer that I'll just point out real quick is the flat packs area. That's relatively new. We haven't had that uh, all. We haven't had that uh, uh, for very long. We did, did do a video on this, but um, uh, but it is here for you if you want to use uh, flat packs. These will give you um, maybe some applications that aren't available uh, in our repos, or maybe some version that's not available in our repo. And of course now that I do the video it's not going to load. Oh, that's because I had the search box field. <laughs> yeah, there's no, there's no there's no MX search box uh, flat packs. So, any rate, so there's there's things in there for you in the flat packs category and of course we always have the stable the test repo, which remember is for applications that have been backported in but have not been used enough to know if they're safe enough to go in our main repo. You've been warned. They're okay. We have these tabs here so that you can install things one at a time without leaving the test repo enabled. 
every now and then you're going to find some library get pulled in later on down the road you're going to find you need to turn the test repo back on to install some other application but uh but it's here if you if you want to try try some later editions of apps there is a ton of stuff in there uh the guys are really crazy about about uh backporting applications to mx and of course we still have the classic debian backports repository which does a lot of the same things Maybe not quite as eclectic a series of applications, but it does have some nice apps in there as well. Um, so that's the new package installer. Beyond that, we got the new kernel, 4.19. We've got Mesa is up to 18.2.6, I think. It's in the release notes. Don't quote me on the version number, but it is 18 point something. That's a lot newer than it was before. We've updated all the firmware. We've updated all the Xorg video drivers. So you guys with AMD, G AMD GPUs or later hardware have a better shot of making work on, on, on MX out of the box than maybe you would have a year ago. So there is that going for new for you. Really, is this is a uh, oh one other big one, and I I can't believe I forgot because we worked really hard on it. So the last thing that's new, and I can't believe I almost forgot it, is in our installer. And in the installer, we have an encrypt option. Now you can use the encryption from our auto install, or you can do it from the custom install partitions. So you got these encrypt check boxes. Okay. So when you do encryption, what's going to be encrypted? Your root partition is going to be encrypted. Your home partition, if you have a separate home partition, is going to be encrypted. And your swap partition is going to be encrypted if you have one. Um, what's not going to be encrypted is this guy right here, boot. We are going to require a separate boot partition. This is going to be a small partition. If you use the auto installer, I think it makes a 512 megabyte partition for, for slash boot. And that's with the Lux encryption system, so that's pretty standard uh, amongst the Linux distributions right now. So that's it for the new stuff in the installer. Uh, I've covered MX Package Installer. We've got the new system tools. We've got the new artwork, but all it's in here. If you're running 18, you're going to get the 17 wallpapers too. That was actually a mistake, but it turned out to be a popular one, so we left it in. But we've got a lot of new wallpapers, a lot of new art contributors, some old art contributors in there too. Um, new members of the art team. I can't say your name, but I put your thank you in the show notes. Aru. A-U-R-O. Lots of great art in there this time. Uh, we've got some older stuff from Antech Designs. we got some stuff in there from Ghost67. Uh, we got some stuff from our other M usual MX contributors, Tim and Skidoo and all those guys, Paul. There's a lot of art in here. There's attributions in the wallpaper folder, so check those out. One last item before I go, and that is from our new team member, a lady. I think you'll see his name in the forums. Uh, nice guy. He has taken it upon himself to basically give us, make sure we have a mirror uh, repository and an ISO download mirror pretty much everywhere in the world. Um, these are all accessible right now via the MX Repo Manager. Uh, this is a crap ton of new mirrors all across the world. Uh, this has benefited both the MX and Antix projects. So big shout out to him for getting that done. We really appreciate it. We've needed someone to spearhead that project for a long time, and he is pretty well dedicated to it. There's all kinds of ways to contribute to your favorite uh, to your favorite uh, open source uh, project, and this is how he's doing it by getting his mirrors all over the world. So thanks, a lady. So that is MX Linux 18. For tips, tricks, how-tos, head over to mxlinux.org or throw up a post. Performed on mxlinux.org. This is Dolphin Oracle and the Oracle Clan saying Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Happy holidays or whatever. Have a great day. <laughs> Maybe you are neither. You have a brawn too. Wow, I'm feeling really disappointed at the lack of, <laughs> of faith that you guys have in my podcasting and video casting abilities. I might be taping right now. I might be taping right now. <laughs> oh! Oh, look, bunny ears. That's fantastic. <laughs>